Hi, I'm Mercy and welcome to the one place where we try to answer all your science related questions. It's the one stop science shop. Let's see who we can help today. It's Sarah from Singapore. Her question is, how do rockets fly in the face of gravity? Good question, Sarah. I think I have to show you the answer to this one and not just tell you. Don't go away. Gravity is a force which pulls two objects towards each other. To send a rocket up into space, one has to overcome the force of gravity. A rocket will remain motionless on the ground until a force acts on it to get it moving. The rocket's engine supplies this force in the form of thrust. And it is the same challenge whether NASA is launching a mission into space or whether we are firing a homemade one in the one-stop science shop. I can show you a space mission, but we can have a go at launching a rocket. For that, we're gonna need a 2-liter plastic bottle, scissors, tape, a paper rocket, I'll show you how to make one, chart paper in different colors, a PVC pipe, and electrical tape. First of all, we're gonna make our rocket launcher. My PVC tube has cello tape at one end so that it fits snugly into my bottle. I'm gonna tape this so that the pipe stays in place. To make the paper rocket, you can use the same tube that we used for the rocket launcher. Now take a sheet of paper and roll it around the PVC tube. It has to be really tight and we cut off the axis. Now I'm gonna tape it to the pipe and take another piece of paper. I just need half of this, so I'm gonna cut off half of it. We're gonna wrap this sheet over the pipe. Make sure it's snug and tight, but you can still slide it across the pipe. And we're gonna tape it together. Let's pull the paper roll about half an inch above the pipe and fold it in. Now we're gonna tape it and seal it so it's completely airtight. Now I'm gonna tape the whole side as well. All that's left is the wings. Fold a sheet of paper in half and cut out a triangle. And tape my wings to the rocket body. Our paper rocket is ready. And we've already made our rocket launcher. Let me show you one I made earlier. Well, you can go ahead and decorate your rocket launcher any way you please. So I have put some foil and some colored chart. Now pop the rocket on and we're ready for a launch. Make sure you don't aim it at someone's eye. Now don't forget, all NASA employees have to start somewhere. I hope you give this a go at home. Have a look at what you need. Two liter plastic bottle, tape, chart paper in different colors, PVC pipe, scissors, black tape. Did you know the sun is also a star? No, it really is. It's one among the 200 billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. We have a visitor. Let's find out who it is. Wow, what a colorful place. Hello there. Hi. Come on in. Welcome to the One Stop Science Shop. My name is Mercy. What's yours? I'm Rishita. So what class are you in? I'm in class 5. And what are your favorite subjects in school? I like science. What about your hobbies? I love singing. So what can I help you with today? Every time I look at the stars, my mind is filled with questions. How did it start? What was the first thing that came into existence? You're not the only one looking for these answers. Great scientists like Aristotle and Tails ask the same questions. Did they manage to get their answers? Well, there isn't one single answer to those questions, but scientific theory keeps evolving. And over the centuries, these theories have helped us to understand more about the nature, the origin, and have all the components of the universe. I suggest we have a look at someone who's made the field of astronomy so much more easier to understand for us. Let's have a look. This is Edwin Powell Hubble. He was one of the leading astronomers of the 20th century and is often lauded as the father of modern cosmology. He was born in 1889 in Missouri in the United States of America and during his school days proved to be a gifted athlete. Hubble had been interested in astronomy and the dynamics of the universe since childhood. He loved reading science fiction novels and in particular, the great adventure stories of the French writer Jules Verne. 
In 1919, he was hired to work at the Mount Wilson Observatory as a junior astronomer. The most important question for astronomers back then was investigating the nature of cloudy patches called nebulae. With the help of the 100-inch reflecting Hooker's telescope, Hubble took many, many photographs of the same set of nebulae. In 1929, Hubble concluded and proved that this distant, faint cloud of light in the universe were actually entire galaxies, much like our own Milky Way. His work, that is now known as Hubble's Law, was considered to be the first observational basis that the universe is constantly expanding. He stated that the farther away a galaxy is from Earth, the faster it appears to move away. Today, this is often used to support the Big Bang Theory, which is nothing to do with popping balloons, but instead states that the universe began with an intense burst of energy at a single moment in time and has been expanding ever since. The realization that the Milky Way is only one of many galaxies forever changed the way astronomers viewed our place in the universe. Hubble's discovery has also helped us to determine when the universe began. Unfortunately, Hubble was unable to receive a Nobel Prize because at that time, astronomy was seen as a separate subject and not part of the science of physics. Hubble spent much of the later part of his career trying to change this, but died suddenly in March 1953 before the Nobel Prize Committee made the change. In March 2008, Hubble was honored with an appearance on an American stand. He also has an asteroid, a crater on the moon, and most famously, an orbiting space telescope named after him. Wow, he is the Hubble of the Hubble Space Telescope. How is he linked with the cosmology though? You see, cosmology is the branch of astronomy that deals with the history of the universe and all the objects in the galaxy. I heard that the universe is 13.7 billion years old. That's a lot of candles on a birthday cake. I wish I had invented the Hubble telescope. Well, why don't you go on and invent the Rishita telescope someday? Well, actually, while we're at it, why don't you help me make one? Now? Yes. Let's do it. So what do we have in our one-stop science box? We have... Double-sided tape. Scissors. Tape. What are these? These are double convex lenses in two different focal lengths. One is 500 mm and one is 150 mm. These lenses help in the magnification of an image. This type of lens is thicker at the center than at the edge. Parallel rays of light pass through a convex lens. They meet or converge at a particular spot on the other side of the lens. Yes, I have read that they are used in magnifying glasses and microscopes. You're right. We also need some chart paper for our telescope. Let me get this out of the way and we'll get started. So first of all, we're gonna take one sheet of chart paper and our double-sided tape. Thank you. Now we're gonna stick one side of the tape to the sheet. Now we're gonna tape the convex lens with the shorter focal length, which is 150 mm carefully. To do that, we're going to roll the chart paper along. You'll need more than two hands on this. This will become the eyepiece. Now we'll use some tape to glue the ends together. You can decorate your telescope by gluing colored paper or drawing on it. Now we have to make the front piece. We'll take another chart paper and do the same thing with a double and a tape. Now carefully put the other convex mirror, this one's with the focal length of 500 mm, and put it right at the edge of the tape. There you go. This time, when we roll the chart paper to make the tube, we'll cut off a little bit to make sure it fits inside the eyepiece. Now we'll tape the ends. Here we go, our outer piece is ready. Now we're gonna put the outer piece inside our eyepiece and our telescope is ready. Do you wanna have a look? To adjust the focus, you can move the outer piece in and out. Can you see anything, Rishita? Wow, everything looks magnified. Here's one I made earlier. Do you wanna have a look through it? Rishita, have a look at that. I could see 
see the stars with these. Yes, you sure can. A telescope is an optical instrument designed to make distant objects appear nearer. It contains an arrangement of lenses by which rays of light are collected and focused, and the resulting image is magnified. I want to make one at home. Sure, you can do that. Well, let's have a look at what you need. Double-sided tape, scissors, tape, double convex lenses, one is 500mm and 150mm, black chart paper. This one here is for your starry starry nights. I hope you can see lots of stars and make lots of discoveries. Thanks, Mercy. I hope it will be in my stars. The universe and our place in it will be always fascinating to humankind. I hope we make many more discoveries about it soon. And that's a universal fact. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you again soon to try and answer many science-related questions at the one and only One Stop Science Shop. <laughs>